You guys have no idea how long it took me to get that fucking thing. <laughs> I just, I couldn't get the shit right. But anyway, hi, Andy here. And uh, today, once again, coming at you from the Macadonado here in Ohio. Sipping on the last little remnants of my big ass iced coffee. And uh, I'm in the passenger side this time because uh, I was doing some work on my uh, uh, Surface tablet computer thing. Um, <laughs> it's not a tablet, but whatever. Um, so I was doing some work there, and it's it's hard for me to sit the tablet on, on my lap when there's a big-ass steering wheel in my way. So uh, whenever I'm doing work on the laptop, tablet, whatever, um, I just sit on the passenger side. And it's a little weird because, like, there's nobody just going to randomly hop in and drive me away. <laughs> it's all... It's all me, but uh, yeah. So today I got work later on, so I'm not going to be on as, as long as I usually am. But we'll try to go as long as I can. Well, yeah, guys. Um, yesterday I didn't make a video on YouTube because it was uh, a very bad day for me. Um, uh, I've been going through uh, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a rough patch, I guess you could say, with with my folks. Um, things of the house are incredibly tense right now, and, you know, it's got me in just a state of just constant panic that I'm going to get thrown out in the streets, and I'm not going to have any place to stay or be able to have a job or anything like that, and so it's, uh, it's really affected me in a lot of ways, you know? For one, I don't have internet at the house anymore. Uh, for, you know, well, it's <laughs> a little too difficult to get into right now. But, uh, you know, they cut, off, they cut off my internet for the time being. Um, there's just some stuff going on with, uh, with that. So they just want to make sure it's not me that's fucking shit up, I guess. So they just took me out of the equation for a little bit to figure out what's going on. But, I don't know. Again, situation's too long and dumb to really go through, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and hopefully it'll just blow over soon. Because, uh, fucking having issues with Premiere on my computer. So it's hard for me to edit video. Well, it's impossible for me to edit videos now on, on my main computer. So I have to attempt to do it on my Surface tablet, which isn't the best at doing that. Because I can't fucking update my uh i can't update premiere on my computer anymore because it's all done through the cloud and like everybody's online man it's fucking annoying so hopefully get internet privileges back again soon and i can carry on smartly with my fucking business you know fucking pissing me off but yeah, so that that's basically why I didn't uh, put up a video yesterday. I was just in a really, really bad headspace, and you know, probably for the best that I didn't post anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, hard saying what I want to talk about in this video because, <laughs> like I said, you know, yesterday I'm just kind of coming off off the heels of just a really bad fucking day. And I gotta go into work and be all like, Hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Oh my gosh. You know, all that bullshit. So, uh, yeah. That's just kind of how my life's going right now. Um, I've been focusing a lot more on, like, kind of hippy-dippy stuff. You know, like med meditation and having a, a clear headspace. I've also got the, the Headspace app as well, so no pun intended. But, uh, yeah, I've just been focusing on cultivating the best me that I can and uh, doing good things as far as that goes. Um, yesterday, I did apply to UNOH, finally. Um, just put in my details and everything, so, oh, <laughs> it's funny that I say that, there's this dude walking around with a fucking UNOH uh, hoodie on, <laughs> it's kind of funny how life works, 
Uh, I did not time that. I swear to God, I did not time that. <clears throat> but in any event, you know, deep divers. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Infinite Waters, and uh, I have YouTube Premium, so I've been downloading some of his videos to watch while I'm at the house, just kind of in more of a meditative uh, feeling, you know. And say what you will about him, I've heard, you know, he's kind of done some kind of shady business stuff, but, uh, yeah. you know, that aside, um, he just seems like a really nice guy, and if anything, you know, even if it is a facade, it's something that helps, you know, helps me calm down. So, you know, is it really a facade? I don't know. <laughs> it's is it, is it a facade if the feelings that the fakeness gives are real? It's hard saying. But in any event, I know this is kind of a rando-ass uh, video, vlog, whatever. You know, I've been doing so many of these these lately. You know, it's I'm I'm almost a daily vlogger at this point, <laughs> except without all the cool B-roll transitions. You know, not that there's a lot of material for me to use out here anyway. But um, I do like doing these live streams because it kind of gives me the ability to put stuff up without the pressure of editing it and all this other stuff. You know, uh, my hair still smells good from the. Uh, uh, I took a, a nice hot bath because that usually helps helps calm me down and I was just in a, a really bad really bad mood yesterday like I said but we're not getting back into that but it's it's helped kind of give me a little bit of peace of mind if anything and uh, yeah you know the sky's clear the day's clear going to work so I won't have to deal with his bullshit um, during the day um, you know it's kind of how it is but uh, like I said this is kind of random and you know kind of all over the place but uh, yeah like I said applied to UNOH um, yesterday put in application fee all that other stuff so hopefully we'll hear back from them in a couple weeks with either the A or the nay should be a yay, but uh, I'm not getting my hopes up. Because <laughs> um, you never know. But, you know, if, if there's anything that, that yesterday taught me, it's that I should be more aggressively chasing my dreams. Because, you know, it's just trying to go back to old habits and old places and doing this whole like getting back to my roots whatever the fuck that means you know that whole thing is uh you know it's nice every once in a while but you know it's like you know living in the past is kind of like uh living in hawaii or something like that you know it's a nice place to live or a nice place to to visit but you don't want to live there and no offense to people living in hawaii i'm sure the ones who do fucking love it out there but for me i'd get like island fever really bad you know i'd want to eventually get out of there because there's only like so much stuff to do um but anyway that's just me so <laughs> and i've lost my entire hawaiian audience shucks but you know point being is you know we can't live in the past we can't dwell on past mistakes we can't keep going back to past behaviors to see if they still serve us um, we need to continue to forge forward and continue to blaze our own path and not not be beholden to other standards that people put forward for us because um, ultimately it, it's our life it's not there they can give you advice and stuff on what's worked for them and it may work for you but that's not always the case and even if you do use their advice you may not use it exactly how they want you to use it so you just have to practice a lot more self-awareness and be more mind okay and we're back <laughs> the thing kind of like the you know kind of lagged out there for a sec but anyway like i was saying you know you just have to be more self-aware and figure out what we really want as individuals versus trying to live up to expectations that others may have for us 
and that's ultimately the lesson that I'm, you know, I'm learning along the way. And I just need to be more aggressive about fighting for my dreams versus just kind of passively doing things. Um, so if there's anything that that moment yesterday taught me was I have to do that and to get out of this town because, you know, it's just, it's not right for me, you know, not long term. It's not, you know, again, it's a nice place to visit. You know, it's good seeing the folks every once in a while, but living here, not so much. Um, it's just, for a lot of people, it's just kind of a dead end. You know, this is the end all be all of their entire life. And, uh, you know, for me, I have way more to do in this life than just sit around and wait to die while I'm paying bills and stuff. You know, there's a lot more out there to explore and to see and people to meet and things to do and stuff like that. I don't want to be trying to fulfill other people's expectations, you know, living a life I don't want to fucking live. And I think that's, you know, been a lot of my problem over the years is that I've been trying to to live a life I want to live while at the same time trying to fulfill other people's expectations of me and that clash is where I feel a lot of a lot of my personal issues lie is you know at what point do I just say fuck them and just go and do my thing live my life <laughs> as the song goes um and, you know, for me, I just have to put myself in a position to win. And that's ultimately the key to my success, is putting myself in a position to win. And what does that mean? Or what that means, rather, is... Uh, <laughs> I did that thing my old captain used to do. So what does that mean for you, right? Well, what this means is... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Getting some Navy flashbacks. But anyway, um, so what this means, Shemate... <laughs> is uh, that I have to pursue going to Japan a bit more aggressively. And I've been talking, like I've been saying, I've been talking with uh, the people over at Lakeland University out in Tokyo. And um, I already have an in with one of their alumni, uh, Jim from the Kid Shore You Can channel. He's a great guy. Again, can't say enough good things about him, <laughs> you know. He does YouTube videos, so if you check out his channel, Kid Shore, you can. Um, he's got a lot of good stuff on like retro video games and like Japan exclusive games, and he also talks a lot about uh, you know just like Japan stuff, like how did he get out to Japan and all this other stuff. And he's also a, a fellow veteran. Uh, I think he was in the Air Force as a corpsman or medic, whatever. Um, so. <laughs> You know, he's got a lot of good knowledge as far as using the GI Bill and stuff like that. And I, I really want to do some videos with him, you know, talking about stuff like that. Because I feel like it, it's a topic that's not really talked about a lot, is, you know, using the GI Bill to study abroad. Not just study abroad, but study abroad in Japan, Chris. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it would be great, you know. Because, you know, you hear about all these different ways to get out to Japan and, you know, going to study abroad, that's one way. You know, a lot of people, when they want to go out to Japan, they want to get the work visa and, you know, they have the four-year bachelor's degree and then they just apply to a job and then they get out there. Others, they do like the student exchange, you know, whether it's like through their own school you know, some people have gone even through their high school to do a student exchange. I know there's an old school YouTuber, Akita Tom. Uh, that's a name. That's a blast from the past. Um, Akita Tom. Back when he was in high school, his uh, his high school, I believe he was from uh, Australia, I think. I don't know. It's been fucking years. But his high school had an exchange program with a Japanese high school. And so... He went to high school in Japan as a foreigner, so he did a lot of YouTube videos talking about his experience then, and I definitely recommend his channel as well. Um, 
if you guys want to see like what going to a Japanese high school is like for a foreigner. It's not again. It's not something that's widely talked about because it's not really something that's done all too often. Uh, it's usually in college, but um, you know, with college they have the study abroad programs, which are usually for like maybe a semester or two, and then they go back to their home university and then just kind of go on from life or go on through life from there. Um, <coughs> but for me, you know. With the with the GI Bill, it's it's kind of specific in some things, you know, and that I can't do a study abroad program unless it's specifically required by my major. So I can't just like take a semester and go to Japan, you know, under normal provisions of a study abroad. So I have to look at other ways to do that. So other ways would be to just attend a foreign university instead of through a study abroad exchange program or whatever and you know i could go to some japanese universities out there but the bah and everything is and just the amount of money that the gi bill is going to provide to those foreign universities widely varies and not a lot of them are uh, really knowledgeable about the gi bill or veterans benefits or any other stuff so if i ran into any VA issues or something like that. I wouldn't really have anybody to talk to to help me out, uh, especially not in a foreign country. God no, I'd probably have to go to the consulate or something. And even then, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, that's where that's one of the reasons why I'm applying to to Lakeland. You know, versus the Japanese universities, just because you know if something happens with the GI Bill or whatever, they can kind of help me out. And it's just, you know, easier to, to get through, you know, going to uh, an English-speaking university. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't want to learn Japanese. You know, I do, but I just want to do it on my own time rather than uh, be forced to learn it. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that don't agree with that sentiment. You know, be like, all oh, Japan all the time. Brr. And, you know, again, if it works for you, fucking fantastic. And again, who's to say that I can't learn Japanese? outside of school you know it'll, if anything it'll give me motivation to learn Japanese so I can interact with people outside of class even people in class because there are some Japanese people that do go to like in Lakeland University and Temple and stuff like that uh, but anyway getting back to uh, to Lakeland they have this thing where it's called the mentor scholarship or the mentorship scholarship I don't fucking know in any event um, it's, it's basically like a, a referral program. So if you can get an alumni from Lakeland to recommend you to Lakeland or say that, yeah, this person said Lakeland was really cool and I want to apply. And if you get accepted, then they waive the, uh, the application fee for you and they give the alumni uh, 50,000 yen. So it's about Probably 450 to 500 dollars USD, depending on exchange rate at the time of this recording. Uh, but still, that's that's fucking awesome. You know, an extra 450 bucks, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I can go for some bills, get uh, get a fat stack of chew high. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, it just seems like a win-win. You know, even for me, like plunking down nearly $400 on an application fee or for an application fee is really fucking daunting. And that's the main reason I'm not applying to Lakeland right now is because, well, I, I really don't have the money for it. Um, but I did apply to UNOH. Um, if I do get accepted, which I should, but you never know. Shit happens. But if I do get accepted, then, you know, once... I receive an exception letter or whatever from UNOH, as you know, sign up for classes and stuff like that. Then I'll, uh, you know, start the process to apply to Lakeland because um, while I did miss the deadline for the uh, like the spring semester or winter semester, however they they phrase it, I did miss the deadline for like starting in January of next year. Over at Lakeland. 
which I did expect. I, I didn't expect to start that fucking early. Um, you know, and it's probably for the best because I need time to save up and stuff like that. But uh, I still am within the deadline for uh, applying for the summer semester, which that doesn't start until uh, April, if, if I remember right. It's like latish April is when that starts. So uh, the plan moving forward is to apply to Lakeland um, while I'm in class at UNOH. And uh, if I get accepted, I'll just, you know, transfer over there from UNOH. If I don't get accepted, then I'll just uh, try again next semester. And, you know, just, just keep going from there. Because, you know, the main thing I'm worried about in getting accepted over there is my grades. Because I did have some pretty bad grades last time I was uh, I was in school, and you know we've already gone through gone through this before. You know it was mostly due to uh, anxiety issues, depression, a lot of shit that I was dealing with in transitioning over from being in the military to being a civilian again. That whole rigmarole stuff uh, is what I was dealing with, and. Uh, you know, that affected my grades. And I was also, you know, working on making freelance video editing, you know, more than just a side hustle. I was making, you know, working to make it like my main job, basically. You know, so I wouldn't have to work at McDonald's. I could just do the, the video editing, go to school, and all that stuff. But, you know, that ended up taking up a lot of my time. And, you know, again, I was just very early in starting out my business, so made some mistakes. Took a little too much time making some videos. And you know, it is what it is. It's just all it's all part of the journey, you know. You just gotta just gotta work through the mistakes and just get better, get faster, all that stuff. Um so yeah, that's the uh the plan moving forward as far as getting back to Japan. Now, as far as saving up for all that, um you know, the main thing is, once I sell my car, I should have enough, you know, to cover a plane ticket, as well as a little bit of extra money before the GI Bill kicks in. Um, not a whole lot, but uh, should be, you know, at least enough for the month, uh, if I budget correctly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that, and uh, getting the ball rolling as far as classes and stuff like that goes. Um, I'm just trying to hang in there as far as, you know, home life and things like that go. Um, I know ultimately everything is temporary and this too shall pass, but it's <laughs> sometimes it's passing like a kidney stone, you know, it's just very painful and it feels like it's never going to end. Um, so if I do put out some kind of dramatic tweets or posts or whatever, I apologize for that. It's just... You know, sometimes that shit can really get to me, and it's it's hard to just, like, keep it to myself, you know. And, uh, just gotta get it out there. So, that's, that is the plan. Hopefully, um, if all works out and I'm able to save up, you know, more money versus, you know, what I'll be able to get off of selling this car, then, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, maybe even coming to Japan earlier, you know, uh, depending on how things work out, you know, because with a, with a student visa, once I've been approved for it, I can arrive, uh, well, no earlier than 30 days from when, oh, there we're back. Okay. So like I said, uh, if we maxed it out, um, I could arrive like as early as like late March. So, you know, I might even be there in time for the fucking the YouTube Hanami party, depending on when, uh, you know, that all starts. Because it usually starts between, like, late March, early April. So, it all depends. But there should be plenty of fucking cherry blossoms around. Should be, anyway. By the time I get there anyway. Um, if I don't get there too late. So, but in any event, you know, even if that doesn't happen at the end of the day i'll still be in japan so 
really looking forward to it and definitely going to keep you guys updated as far as um, where that goes. And uh, yeah, just uh, moving, uh, moving forward and up in the world. So in any event, I got to get going. Got to get ready for work here soon. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signing for now. Thanking you for uh, tuning into this live stream and watching my other stuff. And I've really been uh, really appreciative for you guys for subscribing to this channel, watching my stuff. I know there's some haters out there who's not liking the, the archival content. And I already kind of went through this. Um, in the, I think I think it might have been the last video or maybe a video before. Um, but, you know, I'm just putting up those archival videos to give you guys context for, like, how long I've been doing YouTube. And to also give you context of the progression of my videos, you know. I'm not saying these videos are fucking amazing, because it's just live streams. It's whatever. <laughs> I'm sitting in my car in front of a fucking McDonald's. But, you know, once I get back out to Japan, things are going to change. I'm going to be able to put out just tons of new fresh content be able to make uh, the next season of Andy Japandi uh, the best um, again I don't know if I want to divide the seasons up into years I, I do actually like that idea uh, so instead of it being Andy Japandi season 2 it'll most likely be Andy Japandi season 4 so once we once we divvy out the details and get the videos uploaded on this channel and stuff which that's that's going to be a while <laughs> But I might end up expediting the process uh, just for the Andy Japandi uh, videos. But again, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, as always, we'll see you next time. Get to you later, guys. Bye.